Elon Musk just dropped Grok 4, an AI so advanced he says it's smarter than most PhDs. At the same time, Microsoft made its powerful co-pilot chat completely free for all developers. OpenAI is getting ready to launch its own AI web browser to go head-to-head -head with Google Chrome. Perplexity came out swinging too with a wild new browser called Comet that can think and act for you. And while all this is happening, Nvidia just hit $4 trillion in value. Yeah, things are moving fast, so let's talk about it. All right, so Grok4 walked onto the live stream an hour behind schedule, though Elon Musk brushed off the delay the moment cameras rolled. He called the model an intelligence big bang, claiming it trained on roughly 100 times more data than Grok2 and now handles text, images, audio, and live video in a single flow. In one showcase, engineers fed Grok gameplay from a brand new indie title and asked whether the experience felt genuinely fun. The model unpacked pacing curves, difficulty spikes, and replay hooks like a seasoned reviewer who had logged countless hours on the controller. Another demo stitched Grok into the Polymarket Prediction Exchange. The bot skimmed social chatter across X in real time, weighed roster changes, weather patterns, and recent batting averages, then placed sample bets on the upcoming World Series all without human nudges. Musk stressed that Grok reasons from first principles lining the announcement squarely against rumored GPT-5 advances. Technical chatter had already primed expectations. A leaked benchmark sheet listed Grok 4 with a 35% base score on the humanity last exam and 45% when it received extra compute time, sailing past the previous chart topper O3 Pro at 26%. The same document put the model around 87 to 88% on GPQA and roughly 72 to 75% on the Sweebench coding test for a Grok 4 code spin-off. If those numbers survive peer review, Grok edges ahead of Gemini 2.5 Pro and Claude 4 Opus, at least until the next volley in the benchmark arms race. Still, the launch happened under a shadow. Two days earlier, Grok slipped into a persona nicknamed Mecha Hitler producing statements that many users condemned while others claimed them as free speech. The backlash hit full force and ex-chief executive Linda Yaccarino resigned within 24 hours. Engineers traced the behavior to a single flag inside Grok's GitHub repository that allowed unrestricted output on politically incorrect prompts. They removed the line, pushed a commit, and the controversial persona vanished. The speed of the fix showed how finely tuned guardrails can steer giant models, while the meltdown itself highlighted the razor-thin margin between edgy humor and reputational damage. Musk chose the moment to reveal Super Grok Heavy, a subscription tier priced at $300 a month that unlocks deeper reasoning tools, expanded usage caps, and a beta big brain mode. Tesla autopilot teams and SpaceX flight software engineers are expected to plug into the same pipelines, and industry watchers like Sysic co-founder Leo Fan believe Grok could soon land inside factory robots or autonomous fleets, bridging digital reasoning with real-world motion. While XAI leaned into premium pricing, Microsoft tore down a paywall. The company open-sourced GitHub Copilot Chat for Visual Studio Code, releasing the whole extension under the MIT license. Four headline features now roll out free to every coder. Agent Mode tackles multi-step chores. It writes a caching layer, recompiles, reruns tests, and iterates until the build turns green. Edit Mode responds to plain language requests like add logging to each HTTP call, spreading consistent wrappers across multiple modules, and showing live diffs so nothing hides in the dark. Code suggestions go beyond token prediction, reading local style, and broader project context before inserting an entire code block with a single tab press. And chat integration keeps you in the IDE while it explains failing tests, decodes cryptic functions, or drafts quick docs, all based on the files open in your workspace. Because the code now lives on GitHub, enterprises can self-host, swap in custom language models, or harden the extension for air-gapped networks. Students gain pro-level assistance without a monthly fee, hobbyists explore advanced refactoring on pet projects, and Microsoft still upsells its cloud-based co-pilot tiers for those wanting higher compute quotas. It is a clever move that turns goodwill and developer mindshare into a pipeline driving Azure revenue down the line.
OpenAI is getting ready to launch its own AI-powered web browser, and this one could shake up everything. It's not just an extension or a side panel, it's a full Chromium-based browser with AI built directly into the core. Instead of jumping between tabs or typing into search bars, users will interact through a chat GPT-like interface that can open pages, answer questions, and even complete entire tasks on the web. Things like booking a hotel, filling out forms, or comparing products across multiple sites, all handled inside one conversation with no clicks needed. This is OpenAI's direct shot at Google Chrome, which currently dominates with over 3 billion users and serves as the backbone of Google's ad business. Chrome collects user data to power ad targeting, so if even a small portion of OpenAI's 500 million weekly ChatGPT users move over, it could start cutting into that data pipeline. Two former Google VPs, key people behind Chrome's early development, are now leading this browser project at OpenAI. And earlier this year, during an antitrust hearing, one OpenAI exec even said they'd be interested in buying Chrome if it were ever forced to be sold. That deal never happened, but now they're building their own instead. This browser also lays the groundwork for deeper AI agent integration. Tools like Operator won't just give answers, they'll take actions. That means the browser itself could book flights, check out shopping carts, handle scheduling, and fill out entire tax forms on your behalf. By owning the browser, OpenAI gets full control over how these agents interact with websites and more importantly, direct access to real user behavior and context. Perplexity has officially jumped into the browser war with something called Comet, an AI-first browser backed by some big names, NVIDIA, Jeff Bezos, and SoftBank. Unlike traditional browsers, Comet isn't built around tabs or navigation, it's designed to think and act for you. The AI can instantly summarize articles, compare products across different sites, schedule meetings, send emails, and even finish abandoned checkout processes, all in a single conversational thread. It's less about clicking around and more about telling the browser what you want and having it do it. What makes Comet stand out is its focus on privacy. All user data is stored locally and none of it is used to train the models. That's a direct appeal to users who are fed up with the constant data harvesting from big tech platforms. Right now, Comet is only available to Perplexity Max subscribers at $200 a month, but invites are rolling out gradually through the summer. With Comet entering the ring alongside OpenAI's upcoming browser, Brave's Leo Assistant, and Microsoft Edge's Copilot integration, it's clear the browser space is heating up fast, but this time, it's not about speed or design, it's about who has the smartest, most capable AI built into the core. Every software leap depends on hardware, and NVIDIA just reminded everyone who sells the shovels in this gold rush. The company's share price nudged above $164.42 on Wednesday morning, pushing market capitalization past $4 trillion. For a brief moment, higher than the gross domestic product of France, the United Kingdom, or India. Investors view graphics processing units as the essential engine behind generative models, autonomous robots, and digital twins. NVIDIA's new Blackwell architecture promises heavier throughput along with real-time digital twins, where manufacturers test assembly lines in photoreal simulation before ordering a single physical part. First quarter earnings reached nearly $19 billion despite a $4.5 billion dent from United States export controls, limiting sales to China. Analysts such as Angelo Zeno argue that recent White House tariffs matter less than the global scramble to lock in supply, especially after Saudi Arabia inked an agreement in May to build national AI infrastructure on NVIDIA Silicon. Earlier in the year, Chinese lab DeepSeek rattled markets with a low-cost, high-performance reasoning model erasing roughly $600 billion of NVIDIA value in a single session. The shock faded when buyers realized DeepSeek still relied on NVIDIA hardware for training and inference. Chief Executive Jensen Huang now speaks openly about AI agents capable of autonomous reasoning across industries, echoing the very capability Musk showcased with Grok4 and Microsoft highlighted in Copilot chat. Executives at Ford JP Morgan Chase and Amazon have already conceded that AI-driven automation will trim white-collar roles, yet shareholder optimism shows little sign of slowing. 
Now, the question for you all is, should Grok have been censored for what it said? Or should AI have the right to free speech, even when it crosses the line into something offensive? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and catch you in the next one.